Post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, is a psychiatric disorder that sometimes follows a traumatic event such as combat. About 20% of Americans will experience the symptoms of PTSD at some point, with 5.2 million people having PTSD during the course of any given year. It is made up of such symptoms as having nightmares, experiencing flashbacks, and avoiding people or situations. The exact cause of PTSD is unknown, but a hormone called cortisol may play a role. This is a model of the cortisol stress response. Cortisol is a glucocorticoid, or steroid hormone, produced from cholesterol in the two adrenal glands located on top of the kidney. Cortisol is released in response to stress. When people encounter stressful situations, the perception of threat triggers the autonomic nervous system, resulting in a cascade of neurochemical events, starting in the hypothalamus. When the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, the hypothalamus releases a hormone called corticotropin-releasing hormone, or CRH, to the pituitary gland. CRH activates the pituitary gland to release the adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH. ACTH, in turn, alerts the adrenal glands by stimulating them to release cortisol, as well as another endogenous steroid called DHEA. DHEA is important because it inhibits the effects of cortisol. Thus, after a period of cortisol elevation, DHEA facilitates a negative feedback loop to return the individual to a baseline state. While cortisol is very helpful for preparing the body to respond to stress, too much secretion over a long period of time is known to have adverse effects on the brain. Trauma places an excessive demand on the HPA axis, and this excessive demand decreases the body's ability to mediate stress through the HPA axis. Having chronically elevated stress levels can exhaust the HPA axis, resulting in two types of cortisol dysregulation, hyporeactive or a hyperreactive cortisol response. A hyporeactive cortisol response in people with PTSD is when a person shows decreased cortisol reactivity in response to a stressor and lower overall cortisol levels throughout the day. One explanation for a dampened cortisol activity that produces hyporeactivity in people with PTSD has been linked to exhaustion of the HPA axis so that the lower levels of baseline cortisol and reactivity may compensate for the prolonged periods of higher cortisol levels that accompanied stress. Next, a hyperreactive cortisol response in people with PTSD is when a person has higher baseline levels of cortisol and greater cortisol reactivity when responding to a stressor, which in some cases is sustained for a prolonged period of time. One explanation for this is that HPA dysregulation results in having fewer glucocorticoid receptors for cortisol to bind to, contributing to higher levels of circulating cortisol. Studies indicate that a person's cortisol level directly after trauma and the type of trauma they experience both contribute to whether they'll develop PTSD. This indicates that the HPA access reactivity to the traumatic event is somehow involved in the pathophysiology of PTSD, although findings have yet to solidify its precise role.